Hey everybody, welcome back to Pam's Cutting Board. It's been a while, hasn't it? So, uh, I'm sorry about that it took so long to get a video up, but we've had a few um, roadblocks along the way. Um, as we go along, I'll explain what all's happened, what's going on, and kind of update you. But um, today, Wayne woke up and he was wanting some beans. Um, some beans and cornbread and fried potatoes. So I've already done a video on um, the fried potatoes, the cornbread, and the beans. But it's been a while since we have done a video. So we thought we would just go ahead and video and let you guys spend uh, the evening with us while we, we make some beans. But now, beans, I call them soup beans. A lot of people call them pintos. Um, but I grew up calling them soup beans. They're dried beans, and it does take a little while for them to cook. So it's kind of early in the day. I've been house cleaning and doing some laundry, and I thought I'd just go ahead and stop and put the beans on and show you how I do them. Now, it's a good idea to soak the beans overnight, but sometimes I don't plan on beans. Like today, I didn't have a clue what I was going to make for dinner, but I didn't think they were going to be beans. But that's what he's wanting today, so I thought I'd go ahead and put those on. And you don't have to soak them. Uh, soaking them just kind of um, makes the cooking process a little shorter. But I've got all day, so I'm going to cook them. So um, I'm going to turn you guys around. And I'm going to show you how I start my uh, soup beans. Okay. I keep my beans in the freezer. It just makes them stay fresher a little bit longer. And I've already opened these and used them one time. Well, I lied. This is, uh, hasn't been opened. These are um, dried pintos. And I mix my beans. I like to mix pintos with um, Great Northern or Navy beans. And these, I've already used these. I have opened these. These are Navy beans. So we're going to have a combination of pintos and Navy beans today. And I usually do about half and half, but if you just want uh, straight pintos or all northern or all navy beans, you can do that. That's up to you. I just like the flavor that they both give together. But first, what you want to do is you want to wash your bean. I mean, you don't know who's handled that bean. I don't know how they process it, so I don't know if they wash them. So I want to make sure they're clean. So what I do is I go through, I get a handful at a time, and I'll show you, and I'll look through them to see if there's any um, wads of dirt or um, uh, sometimes you'll find a little rock in with your beans. You want to get, you want to toss those. You want to get that out and then give them a good wash. Now, if I see like a, a bean that's been split I will take those out. There's nothing wrong with it. You can use them, but I, it just makes them prettier if they're all whole. So let's go ahead. I'm going to turn you down to the sink, and then we're going to go ahead and look our beans and get them washed, okay? Okay. So the little navy beans, I'm going to use about, probably about a cup and a half of those. And this will make me and Wayne plenty. We'll have beans for several days and we eat on them like that. I'm spilling them everywhere. I have a little hole inside the side of my, my bag and I'm spilling them little beans everywhere. That's okay. We'll use what didn't hit the floor. Okay. And this is what I'm talking about. You just take your beans, put a few in your hand, and you just look at them to see if there's any rock, uh, any little um, wads of dirt. They'll be like sometimes a little packed um, dirt about the size of a pea. You want to get that out. If there's any half beans that you see, um, you can discard those or use them. It's up to you. I just pour a few out in my hand. 
and look at them. Nowadays, beans are pretty clean, but used to when I, I was growing up, I remember my mom looking them and you could find all kinds of little things in your beans. A lot of times you'll miss the little half beans that split in half and once you put your water in there they'll float to the top and you can get them out at that point too if you want to now i don't have any meat to go in my beans today i didn't have any in the freezer um salt pork is really good big piece of uh, bacon is good to flavor them but you don't have to have meat to go in your beans. I've got some bacon grease where I've um, had bacon and fried it up and I saved my grease. I just put it in a little teacup, put me uh, some tempo over the top and put it in my refrigerator and uh, so I am going to use some bacon grease and that'll give it a little bit of a flavor. I love these little navy beans. I'm so going to go ahead and I'll probably just use this whole time. See how much yeah, I'll just go ahead and use these. So the reason we haven't been doing any videos for the past two or three weeks is the first week I came down with a, a head cold. Here's the, uh, can you see that? I don't know if you can see it. It's just the bean has been split in half for some reason. I get those out. You don't have to. But um, I guess I got, uh, like a little head cold at work and um, I missed one day of work because I just wanted to make sure I didn't have COVID. I didn't think I did but I wanted to make sure so I took the little home test and, and everything was negative so I went back to work but I gave it to Wayne which later turned into bronchitis on him. Here's my little teacup of uh, bacon fat. I just keep it in the fridge and get covered. Also, I keep uh, a tea kettle of water um, and I keep it on low. Keep the water warm in it once it comes to a boil. I just turn it down on low, keep it warm. And because your, your beans is going to, I boil them hard and for a little while and that water is going to evaporate so you'll want to replenish that water and you can put cold water in it but it's going to cool your um your beans down and then they have to come right back up to temp so i just keep hot water when i'm doing it now let me get let me get my pintos cranberry beans is good too I use those in place of pintos. They've got a really good flavor. So I'm going to use about a cup and a half of those. Like I said, we'll have um, beans for days. And uh, that'll be our supper for several days. That's what I grew up on, and I think that's what Wayne grew up on too. We had beans and cornbread a lot of the times times was hard we wasn't neither one of us had a lot of money or families didn't so so that's what we had and if a bean looks wrinkled you just want to get rid of it too here's another half bean but Wayne um, got bronchitis so I had to take him to the doctor and he got um, some medicine for that. And he has been having, he's been hurting in his chest and having some dizzy spells. So he was telling his doctor about it 
and she is going to set him up with a um, cardiologist and they're going to I would say do some tests he hasn't seen the doctor yet but I'm assuming they'll do some tests that was just a little dark I don't like the way it looks so I'm just going to take it out it's not going to make it to the party so I've just been so busy and where I work they have three different ranks where I work rank one is if you if they hire you and you just have a high school diploma uh, then they hire you at a certain base rate it doesn't matter if you are a janitor if you're a, a cook if you're a teacher or whatever this applies to um, each employee of course some employees you you they have to where they require a degree like a teacher or whatever but you know if you're a janitor um, or a cook as I am and you have a degree or college you can you can get higher pay uh, the second rank is if you have so many college hours and then the third rank is if you have a degree so I thought, you know, the house is done, things have kind of settled down. It's a big good time to further my education so I can get a little more pay. And um, so I took two college classes. I took music and I took uh, psychology. And then after I took that, uh, I got sick. Wayne's got sick. So, and I know going to require some running to the doctor with his to the cardiologist so needless to say life has been busy so I've not got a video out and I'm sorry guys I just I've just been so busy my brother is um, back in the hospital he's not doing well at all so life has been busy okay so here's the beans they've been looked and now I'm just going to go ahead run some water over them and kind of wash them with my hands I'll do that several times and make sure they're clean so you want to run cool water and I just kind of wash them like that Okay, the beans are washed. Now they're ready to be put in the pan. So that's about three cups of beans. And you want a pretty good size pot to put your, your beans in. And you'll You'll want to put them on pretty early in the day. I like to do them on the weekends because it does take several hours for them to cook and get tender. Like I said, if you soak them overnight, that's going to cut down the cooking process. It won't take as long. And let me measure how many cups. Let's see what is this. This is two cups. I usually just fill it pretty much full but um, I never measure but I'll go ahead and measure for you guys so that's two cups so 
four cups. Just like I said, we boil them hard and the water evaporates. And the more water you have, the more um, soup or broth, whatever you want to call it, with the bean. And that's what we like. We like to have a lot of the soup because we crumble cornbread in it. How many was that? I lost count. What is that? Eight. <laughs> Ever how many that was. And so, there you go. And you see that little bean, a couple little beans floating. If they float, I just take them out. Okay. Now... Now we're going to season them up. I like to dice an onion and put in mine. While they're cooking, I just feel like that gives it some flavor. This onion is rotted. Let's get us another, let's get us another onion. about a medium onion, small to medium. And I dice it up pretty fine. I mean, it's going to cook up, so it'll be soft if you do get, if you bite into it. But I still just dice it up. Dice it up pretty fine. probably had this meal I would say three to four times a week it was something that we always had on hand it was economical mom and dad had five kids so you know we we had to eat economical we got our protein from the beans We had this a lot, and I still love it today. Whew, that's strong onion. Okay, now we want to go ahead and put that in our pot. I'm going to bring you guys over to the stove. Beans has been cooking for probably about an hour. I've added... I think about four or five more cups of water. I added a little more salt and pepper. I tasted the uh, broth and it just didn't have enough of the salt and pepper. So I added a little bit more of that. And uh, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna put you down, let you take a look at it and see where they're at in about an hour. Um, oh yeah, I've tasted the beans and the navy beans. They are soft, but the pintos, they're, they're still a little hard, so I'm going to let them cook a little bit longer. So hold on, let me uh, put you down here where you can see them. Okay, and I just kind of put a lid um, on the beans. It's not completely on there like that. I leave just a little bit of, uh, like a, kind of put it on sideways, I guess is what you could say. So I've added more of the water, and you can see the the broth, it's getting thicker. 
see that? So once those uh, the pintos gets done, then I'll go ahead and make some fried potatoes and make some cornbread, and that's gonna be our meal. Just simple, just a simple country meal, but both of us was raised on it, and we both still love it. And if we're lucky, Wayne may be able to uh, do a taste test for us. We're hoping. I may add just a little bit more water to that because we, we like a lot of the broth or the juice. And also, I was going to tell you, let me show you. If you cook them in a um, crock pot, a lot of times your your juice or your broth doesn't get thick. And that's the way that, that I grew up on it and the way I like it. And that's why I like to make my beans, my dried beans on the weekend. Because I can be here and, and cook them and cook them the way I want. But if you work and you can't do it on the weekends and uh, you still want your dried beans, put them in the crock pot. There's a couple ways you can still thicken that soup. Let me put you guys up so you can see what I'm talking about. You can still thicken that soup. There's a couple of ways. Scoop you some beans out. Leave just a few beans in the pot with your broth and take, if you have an immersion blender, you can blend up those beans with that broth and that will thicken your, your broth and then add your whole beans back to the pot. Or you can take a can of refried beans. Now, these are jalapeno uh, flavored beans, but you, you could put certainly put that in there. Uh, they make chorizo, they make um, plain ones too. You might want to just use the, use the plain, but that would be up to you. But you can put a can of these in your beans, and that's going to thicken your broth too. So, you know, don't worry if you work and you can't stay in a couple of hours and cook your beans. You still can do them in a crock pot and they still will be good. So I'm going to let these cook a little longer and do a little more housework and we'll be back and uh, we'll fix the rest of the meal. We'll see you in a bit. I did turn after they started to boil for a little bit. I turned my burner down on medium. It's still got a good boil but they're not boiling as hard but, the, but it's still a good boil. Let me, let me turn you down and let you look at it. Move you over here. Can you see the bull? I don't want to get my phone hogged up. But you see, it's still at a good bull. But it is down on medium. My burner's down on medium. So... So there it is. So we'll see you back in a little bit and we'll have us a good old country meal. I'm going to show you how to make a cornbread that I make for my, my soup beans and my fried potatoes. I've got my fried potatoes on. I peeled probably around seven about small medium potatoes. Uh, sliced them up. I got my skillet. Uh, put some oil in it. Uh, I just used uh, canola oil and got it hot and then put my potatoes in salted them and put a lid you hear my dogs going crazy they're over there playing and um but you could add garlic you could add onions green peppers to the potatoes but my mom never did so i just kind of make them the way she makes them but you could certainly add that if you wanted to and i'll show them to you in just a little bit but let's get started on our cornbread okay and we'll turn you down so you can see what I'm doing. You see this? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add me some cornmeal. This is actually yellow cornmeal mix. So it's got some flour in it. It is self-rising. 
I'm going to add about a cup, cup and a half. And this is a half cup measure, so I'll put three of those. And that will equal about a cup and a half. And I'm not being precise. You can see I didn't level it off. When I'm baking, now I'm more precise. But when it comes to cornbread, I've I made it so, so long, so many years. Um, and I usually never measure. But... Uh, it's not going, you don't have to be as precise with cornbread as if this was a, a cake or something. About a half cup of uh, self rising flour. I buy like really cheap measuring cups and I keep them down in my flour and my cornmeal and sugar and stuff. Let me get a bowl to crack my egg in. So I always like to crack my egg into another bowl because you know if it's a bad egg then you've not ruined the whole container of whatever you're making. I like to use a little bit of sour cream in my cornbread. And I don't know, huge tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons. Not a lot. You don't have to have a lot. And then it's not bacon unless you spread flour all over the place like I just did <laughs> and then add just a little milk now this is just a uh, whole milk and I've added a little bit of uh, vinegar to it and let it sit there for a little bit maybe 10-15 minutes so it'll sour up but if you had buttermilk, that would even be better. You just stir it up. You don't need a mixer. And while this, before I, I got everything out, I did put oil in my skillet and put the skillet in the oven at 300 um, or, I'm sorry 425 degrees just letting it heat up and that's all there is to making cornbread guys This meal we've eaten so many, so many years, but I never tire of it because it's what I grew up on. Okay, as soon as our skillet gets good and hot, we'll put our batter in there. We'll bake it for about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, it all kind of depends on your oven. But while we're, we're doing that, I want you to look at my little tray I've got ready for fall. Okay, guys, the food is ready. I'm going to show it to you, and then I think Wayne is going to come on here and just say hi, and um, then we're going to we're going to eat. So hold on, let me show you the food. There's our fried potatoes, and you see it. It they did break up some. They do as you turn them and stuff, but that's okay. And then there's the soup beans. And when I say the broth is thick, I don't mean that it's thick like gravy. It's just, it's got a deeper, richer color to it than if you do it in a crock pot. The, the broth is kind of like a lighter color. And look at those beans. Here's your cornbread. And we're going to have slice the onion with it so hold on um wayne's gonna come over here and just say a few words hey lisa marks i promised that we would be on the cutting board soon we made it i'm sorry i couldn't help pam today but i want you to know that i love you guys and I need prayer. 
Uh, they want to take a look at my heart, but you all know I got a good heart. Uh, we love you. Send your prayer request. Put them in, in the comments box. And I'll still pray. But I need Charles' prayers. Ask God to touch this body of mine. And help Pam. And y'all stick with her. No matter what. Stick with Pam. Love you. Bye-bye. He doesn't get too sick to love on his babies. They lay in bed with me and take care of daddy. <laughs> we love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.